Counting snowflakes in the sky You were singing while we drive I remember cold nights Shimmering snow under my feet Making castles so white Never felt so alive I remember, remember, remember But I'm more than you think You're not so perfect Couldn't walk a mile in my shoes You got skeletons in your closet too I know you're hurting Try to tell the world you're so cool You got skeletons in your closet too
How's it going, guys? Welcome back to... It's Monday, right? It's Monday. It's it's uh, music production, make MIDI piano feel real. We are going to make our piano right here, a MIDI keyboard. We're going to make that stuff feel real. So welcome back to music production session. Where are you guys tuning in from? I'm in Berlin right now. Um, let us know or let me know because I'm the only one here where you're tuning in from and if you've been in one of these before we like to know the the regulars this is a, a problem a lot of people I think come across because not everyone has the availability to have a MIDI keyboard or sorry a lot of people have MIDI keyboards and not a lot of people have real keyboards or real pianos sorry, actually real pianos so how do we make real pianos sound oh my gosh I'm mixing up so many words how do we make MIDI pianos sound real and we're gonna do that today I have two different tracks here both in logic and we're gonna use both stock sounds and going to go through this piano here If you, if this sounds familiar to you and your pianos sound like this, um, we're going to make this piano sound like this in this video. Cool. So not um, very, actually quite a difference. And I didn't do too much to it other than the things that I did take uh, or, or like do a lot. And if you do these things that I'm doing in this video, you'll, your pianos will start, start sounding better immediately. So, oh, you're from Canada. Nice, Dominic's. Dominic's. I'm from Canada too, actually. I'm also Canadian, but I'm living in Berlin and that's where I live right now so yeah now okay so making making MIDI piano sound real um, if you if you know how to play piano it's this is gonna be a lot easier if you don't it's okay we can still get by and also let's uh, hey welcome to welcome from uh, to the chat Please go lean from India. Let me know if you have any questions. I want to just say, let's use the chat box here as a Q and A off the side to this lesson. So I'll be going through how to make um, MIDI sound real in Logic Pro 10. And if you have any questions about Logic or you see something in my DAW here that you have, you're curious about, let's just get into it and uh, use our time wisely. Hope everyone's doing well and keeping safe and healthy let's dive into this piano okay so what makes this piano like sound bad um well let's take a quick listen so the biggest thing right off the bat is this piano doesn't have sustain and sustain is like a well it usually comes in pedal form and it's on every piano like these little things here these pedals on the piano and you press the furthest pedal to the right sustains the notes and it will just keep those notes ringing out and if you don't have sustain on piano or if you just have a MIDI keyboard and you don't have a sustain pedal you can go and buy a sustain pedal or you can actually just you put sustain in with uh, inside the piano editor so we're gonna do that and come at it like you don't have a sustain pedal so this piano here, you can see the notes are sustained. It's these gray bars here, there's one, this gray bar, those are like sustained bars. And that's the biggest thing you can do, like the lowest hanging fruit you can do to make your piano sound better is to add sustain. I would say that's at the top and we'll, get into, we'll, we'll kind of prioritize what you can do. The, that's the biggest thing. A lot of you guys are sending me your tracks and they're sounding good, but 
the, this low hanging fruit, adding it to your keys and your other instruments, we're going to save you. It's just going to make it a, sound a lot more professional. Um, you would rarely never do piano without sustain. So, okay, let's add sustain in MIDI. So, let me fix the mic here. Okay, in order to do that, we open, double click or open up the editor, our piano roll here, and we can see our MIDI notes. I can just zoom out to get you guys to see it a bit better. And okay, so just we're cycled at the top, and we can go to this like automation button here. It kind of looks like a graph. And down here, we just go to this volume button, and then we have options to. Uh, oh, oh, there we go. We have options to sustain. So you can see if I just click on here, I can add sustain. And I have my sustain bar here. So how I got there is going here, this button. And you have this is where you add different types of automation to your track. It's basically the same as like if you go here and press A on your keyboard. This is like the automation. This is automation within the editor. Cool. Okay. So sustain, when you get the sustain bar up, there's only two numbers you have to know. It's 0 and 127. You are my Logic Pro teacher. I'm following your lessons. Thank you for following the lessons. Uh, what, are, what kind of music are you making, Pligo Lean? I'm curious. So the only numbers you need to know are 0, which is no sustain at the bottom, and 127, which is sustain. So we want sustain you got to think of it like you have your foot on the ground. So like you're holding the sustain pedal and don't let it go until you, the other chord plays So right here. And then you want to do like, you want to lift your foot up. So you go all the way to the bottom and you, you put your foot right back on. You just kind of like lift it up and down. And so this is what that would sound like. So already 10 times better without it. Delete that. With it. So, and if you don't, then we have to do two more pumps here. If you don't do those, you'll see what happens. It just is, oh, it bleeds too much and there's too much sustain. So you have to pump or whatever. I think it's pump. Not sure what people say. And then one more here. Bring that up. And now we have sustain. So normally I would do that in uh, with the pedal I have, but you can do it. This is how you do it in the piano roll editor. Okay, the second lowest hanging fruit you can do to make your piano sound real is um, it's going to come down to the velocity and the style of playing. So this is where you're going to, it will be easier if you play piano because you can get, kind of get that true feeling, that true velocity out of your hands when you're playing, which is what I did here in the top one and but we can get away with it by do programming it ourselves um, to a ex certain extent so double clicking in this one you can see all the kind of colors but they're all almost shaded blue which means like blue and logic the blue velocity is soft and here oops this is all pretty green and there's not, there's yeah, it's more of just a less, less a shade of green. And green is like your kind of mids, I guess, mid velocity. And, um, but you would rarely ever want to see it just one color like this. You want different shades of colors within not only like each chord, but each note within each chord. So one way to quickly change velocity is like highlighting all the notes or like clicking one note or highlighting all the notes. And going over here to your slider, 
and like going up or down, that's going to change all the velocity of the notes that you've highlighted. You can also, um, what I like to do is like have a note clicked or if I, if I highlight them all, I have a right click tool, which is my right click on the mouse and I always have it at velocity. So I can just right click and drag down. So usually I would like go like some, do something like this. So I find the right click tool super easy because you can do it. I mean, personally, I think you can do it faster like that. So I'm a fan of the right click tool and you can also do like command a, you can go into, I don't, I rarely ever do this, but you can do something like MIDI transform and you can do some of these like fixed velocity. If you all happen to, if you do happen to want them at the same velocity, you can do something like random velocity brings up this window and you can choose like, okay, anywhere between like, yeah. Okay. This is like 40 and let's just say 90 and select and operate. Operate only. And why isn't that working? That work. Maybe transform. I mean, I, I don't even know, I guess, it should work. 19 events found one mini region. Anyways, you can do that. I wouldn't recommend, like if you're gonna do that, just go in and do some edits. I, I'm always just doing right click tool. So now we have velocity. Um, let me just quickly kind of fix this up and you'll see what I'm doing. So first thing I'm working on the velocity of each chord and like when you playing the piano, you're, you're, you don't want every chord to sound the same. So the second chord is, is softer. You're coming into the, the chord, the progression a little harder here. So the start here, a little harder and then a little softer here, a little bit harder and then a bit harder coming up. And then you can take you can dial into the velocities of each note within the chord as well. Like here are your octave, your low bass notes. If you want them to be all lower. I just got an error from Oh YouTube, you're not receiving enough information to maintain smooth streaming. Okay. That's too bad. Guess I'm pushing YouTube too hard. Well, I guess it's just buffering for you guys, but I'm going to keep going, I guess. Oh, 
Hopefully that will kick in soon. Sorry. This is not going to happen for long. I'm going to get better internet soon. All right. Let's, um, yeah. Anyways, go through that. Spend The more detail you spend, the better it's going to going to sound like without getting too going too crazy now the next thing um okay so the next thing is actually the sound so this is just a steinway grand you can the i mean there's in logic you have the steinway grand the yamaha grand and there's the the boston door for one and then you have like options with pads and strings so all sound pretty good and pretty stock sounds. What makes them not sound great is like the effects. Their reverbs aren't great, so adding reverb will help. So choose the sound that's most appropriate for you. If you have, maybe you have like contact pianos or like the addictive keys pianos or something, that would be even better. But let's say I, I usually typically use one of these three, depending. The Steinway is like the most punchy uh punchy one punchy being i find it's the most of actually the loudest one okay so choose the piano that works for you and then move your chord shapes around one easy way to do this these are just your standard triad chords one easy way to do this is changing like taking one of your top notes in the chord and moving it below and this happens to do this is like using, um, oh, I can't remember the word, inter, uh, oh my gosh. I can't even remember the word right now, interchange. Oh, let's just not worry about it. So take the top one and then move it below. So you see this one below is already there and I'm just going shift option down. inversions thank you i knew someone would jump in there how's the connection guys let's get let's get active in the chat it's too quiet today why are you guys uh why are you guys so quiet how's the con how's the connection how's the voice can you hear everything okay i'm just gonna keep going and um yeah, I'm not I'm not really sure. Can you see? Look at look at my mic. It's slowly moving down. Ever so slowly. But yes, it is called inversion. So thank you. Thank you for, who is that? Zofie. Thank you, Zofie. Thank you for doing that. For telling me what it is. Okay, so let's get back to you. So our piano is already sounding a ton better by using sustain, velocity changes. We just did some chord, um, chord inversions Thank you, Sophie, for telling me that. Yeah, everything's great. The playhead is late, but I don't know if that has to do with the connection. Yeah. Gonna have to ramp up my connection for the, the last time. Sorry if you're experiencing some lagging. Okay, next thing, let's add some reverb. So we have, um, they give us a stock reverb, a large hall, prison main floor. I'm going to use a big reverb that I have as a as a bus and I'm just going to bus some some big reverb out. Oh, 
Already, that sounds really, really much better than our piano before. I wish we, I should have kind of, actually, I'll quickly just do take everything off of what we had so we can constantly compare. It was like this. There was new sustain. And there were no inversions. So that was our piano before. This is our piano now. Already a ton better. Just sustain, velocity, chord inversions, reverb. And you ask, what is the reverb? Oh, sweet. No buffering for Eamon. Awesome. I guess it also has to do with your connection, my connection, everyone's connection. Maybe depending on where you live. Maybe if you're in Berlin, it's faster. I doubt it. The internet in Germany is not good. <laughs> Uh, okay, the re this is a Valhalla vintage verb. It looks like this. I'm just using a plug in here, a concert hall in the 1970s. Really nice reverb. It's a paid plugin, um, but it's not that expensive. To, and I don't actually have any other reverb plugins beside that. And I use some stock space designer stuff when I need it. And actually, the Valhalla has like a free. It's like a, I'll show you. This one is free. It's called Supermassive. It's a ma Supermassive Reverb. And uh, you can go and download it for free on their website. Okay, so what else should we do to make this better? Greetings, James Habanero from the other end of the world. Welcome to MIDI Real Piano Session. We're almost done pretty much making this real. The other bits I would do to make it real are, you can see up here where I played it. I do have these kind of melody lines. So it's just a little bit of a melody and that you can see not all the notes are equal in length. And so that would be the other thing to dial in. Like pretty much all these notes are more or less equal in length and there's no real little bits here and there that make it sound like someone's playing. Like these little bits. So let's add some of those. So we can do the same thing, or you can choose another melody that's in your head. So I have um, pencil tool in my right, or my command tool. So I can just command and punch in notes. Mm -hmm. 
I'm constantly like right clicking and dragging down. This is going to help you quickly do the velocity stuff when you're doing piano roll editors instead of like clicking, going over the left, dragging the bar. This is just, I recommend doing the right click tool. Might be a bit cheesy, but let's try it. Okay, that's that's kind of cool. The next, the obviously go, going forward. I mean, it's fine if you want to loop this, you can, but you can also make like ads. I'm doing Command R to duplicate the region, and um, then I would go into if this is going to be a song where it's really the piano is the focus. I would go in and change change a little bit of the velocity and the actual melody in the second region here because it, if it's just the same the whole time then it will be really really noticeable that it's just midi and you've copy and pasted it but if it's just a a layer of piano you're trying to do it for the track i won't go and adjust it so much because it's, maybe it's just padded underneath the song this kind of piano sounds like it's a ballad piano where it might just be a piano and a vocal So another thing, the last thing that I'm going to say in this video with regards to making it sound more human is the timing. This is very in time right now. It's 100% perfect. Everything is aligned to the grid. Everything is quantized. And humans don't play that well. Unfortunately, even the pros, they're really, really good. But no one's better than a piano with regards to timing. So you can knock it off time here or there that sounds not bad <laughs> so you don't want to make it sound bad but you can sound make it sound human like we can maybe find some parts that will that we can do this you can also do this by depending on how you played it if you go command A and you can do the strength the, of the quantization. So if I do like, uh, yeah, like 15 maybe. So this is too late, or sorry, too early. This is, this sounds okay. I might move these back. You can see it's supposed to be where the cursor is, but if it's just there and you can see, you can even zoom in more and you can, that's more realistic. This is doesn't sound good because it's too early, so I'm going to drag those back or forward.
Just dragging some notes off time. See, this one's coming in before, and this one coming a bit later. That's okay. It's human. It sounds very computery. That sounds like a, a human, I think. We had another octave there. Yeah, we're getting C, C zero range. It's pretty low. Um, how much music theory do you suggest we learn for producing with a MIDI keyboard? That's a really good question, Eamon. Hmm. And how do I answer that? Hmm. I don't think you need any. I think what's more important is your ear for music melody like if you're the type of person where you can hear a piece of music like this now you don't need to theory to know to think a nice melody over this would be da 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 da, da. or another one Dum da 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 da. Like, I'm just singing da 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 da. But I know enough of like what sounds good. You're singing sub like kind of subconsciously in uh in key. And so if you can do that, then you don't really need to know any music theory. However, if you can't do that, then it helps to start with music theory so you know where to start. So we can say, oh, we're in the key of this. And be, like if we know we're in the key of C major, then we can go and use the C major scale and everything will sound good. And if that's sometimes a, a better approach for some people, he's like, show me how to do it, where, like the instructions, the map of where to go. And you go to do it that way, like and that's music theory. I, I like to think of it as that, or maybe you would rather do it by ear and you kind of just hear things and, um, and you just go with your MIDI. You can start by just like being in the grid here or in the piano roll editor and use your piano, uh, sorry, your pencil tool. If we're trying to find a melody, bring up a, put up a MIDI note so you can hear it like that fits this is a f sharp that just fits in the key but this one won't fit G. like you can hear that right does everyone hear that or is it just me like is it that that's not in the key so it doesn't sound good i mean you can make it work doing something like that doesn't really even work but another way to do it is just like <laughs> like just trying things out and putting notes there wherever you feel like it and go crazy with it and just see what works and often you'll come up with different melodies Definitely here. Is it, 
is it important to have the correct or have the key correct at the top of logic in this case? Oh yeah. Um, no, I haven't actually put the key in 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 uh, my my logic session here. That says C major by default. Uh, it is important. I like to have the key up there, so do, so you can disregard that. Um, we are in the key of. So we're actually in the key, oh sorry, in B flat minor. And so I would go there and put B flat minor. And then I, I always have that in the top of my display there because it just helps me remember wh what key I'm in. If I'm adding extra instruments, I need to know quickly and I forgot. So that's pretty much why I put it there. But I think you can do something with that when and I think it actually has to do with this. Oh, I think I know actually now. Um, so, okay, let's, uh, let's just duplicate this command D and let's put a new region here. Okay. So if you bring up your brush tool, I believe it's only going to play the notes within the scale of B minor, B flat minor. Okay, maybe I was wrong. I thought that, scale. oh yeah, scale quantize, that's what it is. So this B flat minor. Sorry, that's super annoying, I'm gonna take the preview off. Why did it just say the other one? No, that's not it. Hmm. I th I can't remember. Sorry, I uh, I don't use the key. So it's got to be it's got to be with something. I think there are some tools with MIDI that you can, if you want to just isolate the notes within the key you can do that and s you can do that i th i knew some way you could do it with the brush tool before but it's not working right now and i don't want to waste people's time to figure it out but yeah yeah that's a good one how do you find yeah auto tune auto tune um How do you find requires the correct? Yeah, definitely. Audit, yeah, you need the correct key in Auto Tune, but it's not it's not connected here. So if I like, if I bring up like a Logic Auto Tune, you have to go and choose your key here. So that's a good question. Like, Zofi, how do you find a key? Because if you're in, if you want a pitch correction, you need to put your key in here. The easiest way is to play by is to find it by ear and that's how I find it. And someone asked this question actually a few weeks ago and it's it's actually, it's hard question to answer if you're not finding it by ear, but I would start like, you have something in your song, right? Of a, maybe it's a gu guitar, piano, a vocal melody. Um, there's going to be a root note in whatever progression you're using. So find your, it's not the drums. Although the drums are tuned, um, it's much harder to find like the key if you just have a drum bit. So find your 
your like main progression, piano, guitar, whatever it is. And then how you find it by ear is literally like finding the root note that works with everything. Like, okay, so how I find found, found the key of this is I listen to it. And how I find the key and what works most of the time is um, choose the chord that works to end the song nicely. So, for example, so we have this chord, this chord, this chord. So if you're gonna, we're gonna end the song, would you end it like this? No, because that's sounding like it's gonna go to another part of the song, which is cool. You could use that for another section of the song. But the, the chord to end the song is this one. Like it complete, it's complete, right? Because it's, it's the one chord. I mean, <laughs> it's it's a hard one to because it also it sounds not so bad ending on this one. Yeah, it's it's. How else can I explain to find the key other than if you can't do it by ear? I just hear that it's that. It's just, it's also because I know a bit about theory and have some experience, a lot of experience playing piano. Another way you could find it is, yeah, maybe using auto tune like Eamon's suggesting, actually. You could like. Actually, you could theoretically speaking, put it right on the piano, right? Sharp natural minor. So if it was an A or F sharp, if we thought it was there. See how it's making all those mistakes? Oh boy. I don't know if sure if that's the right way to do it. Sorry. Uh that's a that's a good question. <laughs> that's honestly do that. If there's a website where you can upload your song and tells you the key, and if you can't find the key by ear, which is totally fine go to that website maybe maybe even if you could drop the link in the comments for people because then it's just it's easy but i like try to learn by ear if you can and the best way to do that just play more music learn how to play the piano maybe take a, like a beginner course of playing the piano or playing the guitar can you archive this live stream yeah i mean it will be up on my channel for sure um, you can go watch it after all the live streams are available on my channel afterwards.
that's that's the way to do it, Zofi. That's how I find the key and keep doing that and you'll be finding the key in no time for things. Okay, so let's take a listen to our piano now. Oh yeah, let's take that auto tune off. Now listening to it again, it's kind of getting a little bit cheesy with all these things here. It's just, it, it does sound a bit straight. Maybe I would just loosen those up a bit. But you, but it sounds way better than what it was before, which is this. I think our P MIDI piano sounds more or less like a human. So that's a that's it for this lesson, guys. Unless you have any other questions, I'll quickly answer them in the chat. So feel free to ask now. Next Friday, we're doing a music marketing live session. We're going to follow up on the release of my song. I just released a song um, on Friday and uh, I have a goal to get 100,000 streams on this song in the first month. So we're gonna check up on my strategy of getting streams on that song. So feel free to tune into that one, subscribe because uh, I post a video every day on music production or music marketing to try and help you guys on your journey as indie musicians, just because I am an indie musician myself doing everything you're doing so we can help each other along the way. You're very welcome, Sophie. Hope you uh, are can learn your um your key Just keep keep finding the kind of passion and in, i i hope this is like encourages you to learn the piano or guitar or you're taking lessons like you said to find the key so keep going you'll get it you're welcome for all the tutorials many more to come so subscribe and we'll uh, we'll see you guys in the next one okay ciao Oh, yes, <laughs> please do check out the new song. Yeah, it's called Goodbye, and it's available on my channel, YouTube, or on Spotify. So.